in the building, I feel good, I feel great, <laughs> season two, we back, we lodge on the motherfucking streets, what's good, I'm sipping Deuce, I'm here with Eat Bands, we lit, nigga, what's good? Yes, I'm here, I'm here, yes, man, I had to come through for the affiliates, man, I've been watching y'all for a little minute, too, mm, so I'm my brother, I appreciate yeah. the love, definitely, definitely, always show love, always support and shit, you got, everybody got their cup, everybody got pour up for me. Right, it's so. not drink champs, though, but still, <laughs> <laughs> this is pulled up out here, got mine. <clears throat> So what we doing? What we doing first, man? What we doing first, man? All right, man. Listen, my man got a new project out. What's up, on Nate? I like how you did that too. I should kind of remind me of um, Usher shit, eighty-seven to one back in the day. Whatever. You did that shit on purpose though? Nah, it was back in October. I was in the studio, and somebody just asked me like, "Yo, what you going to name it?" And I, it, it took me like ten minutes, and I came up with that. And I was like, "Yo." 1718 and I knew 2008 was coming along. My birthday is actually New Year's, so I just had, you know, the New Year's on my mind and everything. And I was like, that's so ironic. So so what does the 1718 stand for exactly? So I mean, okay, that's the area code. Right? I, think, I, so, I, area code. I was yeah. thinking of it. Sure. But the 1718 and then the project dropped January 7, 2018. So that's perfect. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, every time I told somebody that, like, I was hyped, but I was like, yo, don't tell nobody that. Yeah. Whoever don't work out yeah, yeah, right? I yeah. felt like that's some fab what it did or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, that's nah, too that's lit though that worked out like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm still surprised now nobody did it after the fact, but um, yeah, that was real special to me. Mm. So um, how, how long did it um, take you to complete it? Uh, I had other tracks like okay, January of 2017 when it first kicked off. That's when I that's my first time in the studio and I made mad tracks. But as far as everything that's on the tape. Um, I would say probably like start of July. Wait, so wait, so um, your, your first time you was in the studio was last year, January. Yeah, I just, it's first been a year. taking shit serious. Yeah, it's been a year. Mm. And you said how long did the project take you to finish? About six months. Six months. It was like July, around July, when um, I was saying to myself like, yo, I gotta really. I was just making tracks for no reason, putting mm. stuff up on SoundCloud, but I was like, let's put something together because they're gonna need that project, and then I started from that point on and. It came together. It made and it, it made a lot of sense once I put the title to it, you know, around October and stuff. But yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, All right. So um, how like how hard was it to pick and choose tracks like to get the feel for like the sequencing and shit? It wasn't hard because like I always had you know my my gang with me and stuff like that. So just mm -hmm. based off reaction and stuff like that. Like I had stuff. I mean everything I feel to me is good, but to the utmost like the tracks that you, those ten tracks that you heard on that tape, those mm -hmm. were the ones we were like yeah like there's no doubt about it like, we got to do this so it was easy for me i just looked at their reactions i would you know text people send them a couple people my songs just to get reactions you know i moved based off that and we put it together mm -hmm. so um, what would you say like your your favorite track of the I'm the right right now. Now. <laughs> i didn't write that shit down i'm it's yeah, you not the first to ask me. I like it's hard to answer this question because I found a love for each song because of what each song does. Mm -hmm. But it would make sense for me to say the outro. The outro? Because that wasn't even supposed to be on it. That was just like I was going through some stuff and it was it was real therapeutic for me to just get that out of my head. You even said that like in the song, I think. In the outro. Yeah, like that was my therapy. Like yeah. I had all of that. Like and when I excuse me when I um recorded it. And I'm saying all those things at the end, like, oh, it's, yo, it's my therapy and stuff like that. That was off the wing, because I was happy that I took, you know, that off for me, and I actually made it a song. Yeah, so, right. yeah, that was real therapeutic, and that's probably my favorite song in there, because it, 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 it means the most to me. Everything else was valid, too, but real deep down inside, that was it. So who would you say is, like, your favorite artist right now, and, like, ins who inspired you to, like, become a rapper yourself or artist? I, um... Growing up from like young age, it's always been Ho, Jay Z, like that's mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. That's the thing. You know about me too, man. I think Ho, like, like, that's that's your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Like, mm -hmm. That's, that's, a, that's a, 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 a like 
I remember growing up, people used to hit me with the Nas stuff, and I was like, nah, 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 like, Jehovah got it, like, I always, always got that savviness about his music. I always stuck with him, but nowadays, what really kicked it off, and I, I mean, a lot of people probably know this too, but Dave East, you know what I mean? I ain't know that too. You kind of got that, that, that little Dave East kind of sound to you a little bit. Yeah, he, he, really, he really inspired me a lot too, because it's like, it's raw, you know what I'm saying? We look yeah, at a lot of these artists now and stuff like that. They try to, you know, make that hit or they try to just sway in some mm -hmm. certain way. Like, it, I really feel it from, like, he say from the gut and it's real and it's gut. And he knew he New York too, you know what I'm saying? Right around the way. So it it really inspired me. I'm, I look at him like, damn, okay, you from the city. Mm -hmm. you came out and said it aggressive. If I, you know, I have that built in me too. I could take the same route. Right, he really like kind of paving though, like the way for niggas now to come out like that. Cause before it was just, you had to make the hit. You had mm -hmm. to sound like, a hey, Boogie, all these mm, new niggas. And even he was on the he was on the freshman cover with all these new niggas that sound kind of like the same. He's mm. the only nigga that stayed thorough, you feel me? Exactly. And that's he actually made it through. Yeah, so brought exactly. him to the to the to the mainstream because he had a certain sound that you feel me that was kind of New York, you feel mm. me? So that pushed it for him, you feel me? That's, that's why now I signed him and I started fucking with all of that. You feel me? That's a fact. I, I, so I love the Davies, man. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't really see myself, you know, trying to fall into what a lot of artists are doing. So when I found somebody that was on. Um, Really rapping hard and in New York, it just stuck with me. What's the word? Different angles, girl, you came through You never late I said that in my last song Your time here could last long Depends on if I'm turned on and I go walk We both know the goal, so we both go strong I only got my tube socks and some gold on I'm about to do you so wrong Come and take this picture Got me laid up with ya All I see is ripped gold packages and burnt out swishers Torn coals and bottles of liquor Move slow, no, I want that quicker Cause I'm that nigga you just so happen to be here Eyes blurred, but the picture's coming out clear The way you put it on me, you about to make my year Oh yeah Reload the film Your friends be talking about me like, yeah, I know this him But you gon' get this not like working a 1 to 10 But you gon' get this not like working a 1 to 10 Had to repeat it, everything I said come in a sequence Healing your chest, the pledge of allegiance I pledge to give you what you been needing Look down, feel it and see it Pain, pleasure to find it, the meaning you find it, I mean it Come take a picture on this Polaroid You change true, I've been that guy Girl, you love it, please don't lie Peace like wise, I'm giving hand signals How I turn a nightcap into my next single How these hours go by and I still need you You be on my skin forever like you came with needles The attire you acquired came in through and see through You know exactly what I'm thinking when I come and see you This here became a routine You know the way we do things You down looking up These rounds is a must Turn into a photo shoot You got all the space you want This ain't a photo booth Girl, you gotta love the boy Come take a picture on this Polaroid Yeah, move a little to the left Yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's good right there Now turn around real quick <laughs> Nah, lower, lower Right there. Stay right there. Alright, last one. Go. 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 Alright, welcome back to the Radio, that was your boy E Bands with Polaroid. Yes. 1718 out now, all streaming services on Tidal, on Spotify, Apple, Apple Music. music. Mm -hmm. So you got no excuse. You got no excuse. You can't make a while got that. You, you know, you feel me? It's here. 
Anyway, we think about putting on the cloud too in a little bit too. So yeah, but definitely, like I like how you did those straight official, you know, because you know when you put it straight on, on strictly on SoundCloud, like people gonna fuck with it, but you know official it's on Apple and all this other yeah. shit, so they gonna take a little bit more serious. Even people that know me won't even look at your shit. Gonna right. take it way more serious off of it. Right. So um, you know what you Um, so let me ask you about this um. This girl that was in your video. The Gen <laughs> well, how you say her name, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Gen or how, how you say her name, bro? I don't know. Geneski. Geneski. Oh, yeah, Geneski. Okay. Um, so, like, how did that collab come about? Because I know she's like, I seen her with, like, <laughs> like, like that's that's not not her. Her. We know, some, we know <laughs> some shit. Like, there's stuff we talk about daily about her, but, I mean, it's all love. But, um, my, uh, my DJ, you know, my, my big, my big homie, um, X, DJ X Rated, you know, he, just came to me with it. Like, I guess that's a whole Haitian thing because she Haitian and he Haitian. It was a whole thing. He knew his, he knew her manager and everything. So, um, he just came to me with, with it one day and I was like, yeah, she valid, blah, blah, blah. Like, let me get her gram. I went in the gram and seen the numbers. I was like, okay, if that's, if that's real, that's going to bring it in. Yeah. yeah, I met her. She's mad cool. Like, and I even bumped into her after we shot the video. Like, even in the hood, she lived right around here. Like, yeah, so yeah. Too far from it. But, um, nah, she's lit. Like, she's doing her thing. I you know, seen her do a video with, with Kodak too. She did a video yeah. with Kodak. She did a video with Remy Ma. Like, she did, yeah. It's like some freestyle too. She, did yeah, she got style. She kind of vibe that shit. Yeah, she doing her thing. She's she up. Is she a rapper? Like, yeah, she, she, she started off dancing. Um, you know, I don't want to tell a story for her because I may not know everything. But yeah, she started off dancing, and now she's trying to get into the rap thing. And you know, I mean, based on what I seen, she getting the numbers and everything. So she doing it properly. But as far as the video went, that was a good thing. All right. It came together. Shout out, shout out to Jenna Ski. Mm-hmm. Your manager has the thumbs down on it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna say that, but I heard. I heard. Yeah, we, I heard. we actually got a good business person, but we're gonna keep that on the wall. Like he said it on the fucking end. Yeah, nigga. Nigga. I ain't gonna keep it on the wall when you sit on the end. I mean, nigga, I'll show you a little mess, nigga. Niggas know how I give it up already. So how come see me, nigga? You give it up. You give it up for you. She got Kodak on. <laughs> <laughs> she know what she doing. I mean, I keep it, I keep it positive and all love, but she uh -huh. know what she doing. She know what I mean. Ain't the first and the last. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, man. All right, so um, tell me about BAM Records, man. Oh man. All right, so damn. Like I said, I started back in January of last year, and um, I mean, I think you know, I had a couple friends, including you know, Des. I got here with me. First, shout out to Des in the cut. Facts, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody know I had the potential and everything, like even back in high school, I used to just write little, you know, raps, whatever, send them to Dez or his family and stuff like that. But um, when I started taking it serious and the content, the content became more real, everybody started gravitating, like all my close bros and then um, one of my bros, Key, that's another big homie to me too, he said, uh, B-A-M, by any means. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh shoot, that came together nice. By any means is already taken or whatever, so... We ain't wrong with that, but we wanted to keep it the same, so it's been about money. Okay. You know, at the end of the day, I love the music and everything, but every move we make, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. we trying to mm -hmm. set, our, some money. Yeah, money set ourselves up financially <laughs> and stuff like that, so we, you know, we've been about it, we're going to keep on being about it, B.A.M. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. who's in this, who's in this, this label? Is it just you and Yeah, well, same thing. We same it's, thing. A whole, it's a whole <laughs> gang. Like, anybody that you can see that could get real close to me with, like, being in the studio, being at shows and stuff like that, that's B.A.M. Or they probably just know that. Like, J King. Yeah, J King. J King, man. Yeah, Team I'm, season out now, too. All that. You see, I like this because I feel like Queens right now, like, especially us in general, like, we're mm -hmm. really uniting each other. Like, we're really united yeah, yeah, as a group. Because yeah. yeah. you yeah. guys fucking with J King, we fuck with King, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, all of that, mm -hmm. you feel me? And I, I like this networking that's going on within Queens right now because this is this, we the new era. Like, you feel me? Mm -hmm. We going through it right now. That's exactly so, right. Yeah, we don't realize it because we going through this shit, but we the new era. Just like how you see Khaled and Diddy, all them niggas is at the top yeah, of that. This is how they started, you feel me? Like, fact, so fact. And that, that's something that Queen's, like, always lost. Yeah, we do. Yeah, in fact. Everybody yeah. trying to get on for themselves and shit, yeah, so. Yeah, it was 50, yeah. man. I'm telling you, 50 was one A lot of people were saying that. Yeah. I remember, I remember when, when we had yeah. Travi on the show, and he yeah. brought that up to me. And ever since then, a lot of people been jacking that shit, Yeah, too. I didn't think about that until he said it, too, bro. I think 50 had something to do with it, man. He showed that he was telling niggas, like, yo, it's me, nah. fuck y'all niggas. Like, right. Nobody wants to work with nobody. Yeah. Right. I mean, that was his energy to get I in. I disagree. That was, nah, I believe yeah. in that. I believe in that. You think 
Fifty was just on Hot 97 talking about that yeah. Rosenberg. Oh my God! Nah, when he was on he Breakfast said, Club, he said he didn't. It was of course he's gonna say that. I mean, of course if you yeah, he's gonna say that. that but it kind of nigga. Was, he bro. made he you made know. he made people in the industry afraid to work with certain people because he knew like, I right, if I'm against Fifty, then it's over for my career. Especially when I work with certain niggas. He made the industry afraid of him, which led the industry to okay, put everybody. Nah, but everybody the industry was putting everybody against him. When the industry, you don't see how when he came out. The industry, like, nobody liked him. Nobody liked Fifty because he was a bully. And I think, the I think, I think the fans gravitated towards yeah, him. Yeah, the fans bully. loved him, but the... the, the artists and shit? You mean artists? Yeah, I'm talking about artists oh, yeah. and, like, the, the labels. Niggas didn't like him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely got a lot of They were trying to... Yeah. Like, the same thing with the whole um, Kanye and um, Fifty shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kanye didn't win that fairly, bro. That was... That yeah. was... That was... That was, it was, it was niggas. It was niggas behind the label that pushed for Kanye to get that. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they wanted Trump, him. They, they, were, they were trying to, they were trying to kick Fifty that out, fact. bro. Yo, and that, that, that's when it happened. Everybody. That's when it happened. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly bro. when it happened. I don't, I don't, I don't think he had the better album. I don't album. think he killed that shit. And hey, plus, he's not the one who's in charge of the radio plays, bro. Mm-hmm. He's not, but who? It's, it's all about what the consumer wants. Yeah, that's not no, not not on the radio. On the radio, it's about the label and who's pushing the most money to the DJs and the exactly. station. That, that, that's what yeah, was on the radio. You don't got nothing to do with yeah. that. And b- back then, the radio plays mattered. Yeah, nah, yeah I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't. I can't. I can't put that on fifty. Honestly, I don't know. Regardless, he of, was wilding though. <laughs> regardless, <laughs> regardless yeah, of his yeah. true or false, I think you know after he did that, it really made a lot of New York rappers better. They made them better. Yeah, in my they kept opinion. Us, they kept us on the hush for a minute, though, niggas. No, and down south rappers started popping up, and then we started going to their way. Niggas, niggas from New York was moving down south just so they get mm-hmm. the, even, that, even, that um, Miami sound, that down south sound and even, shit. Even now, a lot of new, um, young New York niggas who you see coming out, a lot of them sound like down south niggas. Like, even, um, I was telling my girl the other day, like, Rich Homie, what's his name? Um, Rich the Kid? Mm-hmm. He's from Elmont. This nigga, yeah. I thought I thought this nigga's from Atlanta or some shit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He got a he got a Atlanta name too. Chris. Same thing I'm saying. He's from Elmont, bro. Has a whole label and everything. Word. With a whole bunch of down south. Nigga, I, th- I thought Jay Chris was from Chicago, nigga. But he's from, huh? I thought Jay Chris was from Chicago. Yeah, like, yeah, but these niggas are from New York, you feel me? They just got that down south kind of sound because that's what's right. working for the young niggas, you feel me? But I don't... I, don't, I mean, to me, the reason why I said I think it's better because I think I have that mentality a little bit too. Like, I... I I work my best off of aggression, off of being like trying to really push the B and really come at somebody. Like even though it's not particular to somebody, yeah. that aggression really brings a lot out of someone. So I feel like it made a lot of us better. Yeah, facts. It, it, it probably did, but I mean, hopefully for the long run. Individually, I say. So who you who who you say got it right now for New York? Uh, other than me, um, <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> um. As far as New York goes, I mean, it depends on where, where your ear wants to go. Because if you really want to listen to, I'm not going to say nothing is not real rap, but like I said, if you want to listen to the nah, Dr. Dre. It's definitely Q's, not real rap out here, bro. It is, <laughs> it is fake rap out here, bro. <laughs> if you want to listen to the Don Q's and the, and, the, and the Dave East and stuff like that, then you could take that route. And I, I like that a lot more. But um, if you're really looking for a hit and something to sway to, something to play in the parties and all that other stuff, we, we got that too. I mean, I figured that's what, like, who, like you said, Rich the Kid come, mm-hmm. came from out of here. Jay Critch is from Brooklyn. Um, A Boogie, yeah. A Boogie probably got the top spot as far as that's that. How, that's how I'm yeah, actually, I was thinking A Boogie. Like, as far as, like, commercially, mm-hmm. I feel like A Boogie got it. Yeah, I, I ain't say that first because, like, I'm trying to tap into who's under, because he already gone. He's good. I'm trying to see who, dang, who's going to do it again. You know what I mean? But yeah, Boogie definitely got that too. All right, so let's get into the next song of this EP. Yes. Mr. Way Too Easy. <laughs> I love this. Get into that right now. Way Too Easy. I said it's way too, I said it's way too, 